What's up, Simon? It's welcome back to a new vlog episode number 49. We're actually close to the 50 episodes and today we will talk a bit more about soft skills. So over the years, a lot of people have questioned me by email, by comments, how to become a self-employed developer just like you are, Simon. Of course, the question isn't answered that easy. There are many paths to become self-employed or a freelancer, but I think there are a few key habits or uh, character traits that you need to have in order to become a self-employed basically anything. And today I want to share with you my personal experiences from the last years. Actually, it is almost three years now already that I am self-employed, so I will give you my view on this topic and share with you five character traits that you need to have if you want to become a self-employed developer. Treat number one for me is definitely motivation. I think I've talked about this in the past uh, over and over again when I had a, a job and got up like an hour or two hours earlier just to work on my blog and write stuff. And this continued when I became self-employed as well. Having some sort of internal motivation is something that's I think super important for basically everything uh, or every area in your life where you wanna succeed. When you have a job, when you go to work, you kinda don't need a lot of motivation. You just know that you show up there every day, there are tasks you're gonna work on and you just work on it because that's the way you get paid for it, right? But when you're self-employed, this isn't always the case. So I get to my work, which is basically here. And just showing up in the morning and getting to work actually and starting the work requires you to be motivated to actually leave the bed and do something because you lie in bed and you don't really know what you're gonna work on, is it really important what you want to do today and it's really a lot of motivation that you have to bring up every single day to continue work and this doesn't really get easier over the years so in the beginning it was kind of like okay I want to make this work and I really need to get up early and get this done and after a few years it's like, well, do I really have to get up and do it today? But yes, you have to. You, you still have to bring in the motivation even after three years to work constantly on something, to work in the right direction, to have uh, the energy to pursue the bigger dreams and the plans you have. So getting yourself into a position where you can motivate yourself every day you can motivate yourself for things where you don't really feel like you're motivated is something that is super important and I don't think that a self-employed developer can make it without bringing your own motivation to the table. Trait number two for me is to be focused. This was actually a problem over the last year when my daughter was born and my wife was at home. If you don't have the boundaries between work and family, focusing on something becomes a lot heavier. But even if you don't have kids, maybe you're alone at home or you have some sort of remote office, focusing these days is still really, really tricky. And even when you think you are focused, you are doing some great work, there are so many interruptions today that it's so easy to just lose focus instantly. It's really, you're, you're losing a lot of things if you become distracted by different things. So staying focused on one task, getting into the tunnel, the developer tunnel, putting on the music and just working, perhaps using something like Pomodoro for your times, is something that is really important for self-employed developers. Besides all the interruptions that come from external things, there's also the focus on what you actually want to do. My task list is pretty long and I try to schedule for the days really just like three or four things that I want to focus on because I know if there are like four, five, six different things and I start to work, I will actually, or my mind, thank you very much, will actually start to think about the other tasks. Okay, what video will I record or when will I shoot it? What will I say? When will I do this and when will I do that? And I already lost the focus once again on the topic. Being focused or having the ability to really focus on just one thing and shutting out everything else is super important as well. Treat number three for me is being risky. So this whole operation of becoming self-employed or becoming a freelancer is risky in itself. You have to leave the security of a job for something most of the time pretty unknown. And because of that, you will worry a lot about how to make ends meet, especially in the beginning. Uh, will you have enough clients? Will you have enough work? Will you earn enough money? 
And even now after three years and having a comfortable base of clients and projects going on, I still sometimes worry about what if just everything disappears right now? I don't have the security net of a job, uh, in most of the countries, especially here in Germany, you have quite a comfortable situation as an employee. You will have some sort of uh, retirement fund or anything like this. And basically all of this is something you need to figure out to handle for yourself if you are self-employed. It's not just in general about the money and being risky about what you do, but also about trying out new things. I constantly try to come up with new ideas for new projects. Every new client is a new risk for yourself and your business. At the moment, I actually also think about doing something like taking perhaps half a year off from all of the projects uh, with the client work. Then I have to focus completely on my own projects. And of course, that would be another huge risk for me once again. So being okay with risk, still having a healthy mind and a good mindset, although you're constantly faced with a lot of risk and insecurities, is something you have to go through as a self-employed developer. Trait number four is to be reflective. I know about many people that just don't really have a plan for life or don't really look at what they did and how they did things and if they should change certain parts of it. And especially if you don't have a supervisor or boss or anything telling you what to do, it is really important to basically review yourself. Just like you review your commits, you should also review what you do. Is this the right way to spend my time? Is this the right project? Is this still something that I enjoy? Should I do something different? There are a lot of questions that you should ask yourself on an ongoing basis, perhaps weekly, perhaps every month, perhaps every quarter, just to review yourself, find your way somehow through these things. I failed with a lot of projects in the past, but I learned from some of them and I try to not make the mistakes that I did again. And that's not only true for projects, it's also for a marketing approach, how you talk to people, how you present yourself, where you present yourself. Really, there's so much you need to take care of if you're self-employed, everything is up to you and therefore, every now and then you have to be reflective with yourself, with everything that you do in order to figure out what is working and what's not working. And you have to be pretty honest with the things that are not working or not bringing joy to your life or not bringing income and just get rid of them. The last item, number five, is to be organized and that's actually one of the things I'm pretty good with. I've always been pretty structured on when I will work on something and I always saw the, the bigger picture. I knew in advance if anything had to be finished in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, next month. So I had these raw ideas of when something had to be finished and also when I had to start it. And once again, you don't have anyone that is telling you what to do. You have to schedule everything yourself. So of course you can accept five or 10 clients, but if all of them want to have a project finished at the same time, you will gonna have a huge problem. So organizing your days, your weeks, your month, all of this is really important if you're self-employed. I for myself use Todoist right now with like three or four tasks every day. I don't use time boxing or uh, don't really use my calendar. Kind of have like themes for my days because I learned over the years that in the beginning of the week, Monday, Tuesday, I'm pretty good with creating content, recording videos, writing stuff. On Wednesday, I kind of like just to get into work, client projects and code. On Thursday, I try to be Perhaps on like new projects, a bit of marketing and on Friday, I'm really low energy and just want to go to the weekend. So I have some administrative tasks, answering comments, recording some welcome videos and just making sure that everything is fine once again for the next week. So this kind of organization really helps to give your week a theme. And if you're not organized, if you're always late with your project, that's definitely something you should work on if you want to become self-employed one day. Alrighty then, that's it for today. These are my five character traits that you need to have as a self-employed developer. I would love to know your opinion about this. Perhaps you are already some sort of freelancer, so let me know what you think is your most important skill to manage your daily life. Or otherwise, what is your opinion about the most important skill to have as a developer? I would love to see your comments right here below the video. Of course, any questions always welcome. Next week, hopefully our anniversary episode number 50. No, I think it's that way. So enjoy your week until then, and I will catch you next week like always. So happy coding, Simon. <laughs>